Before we get started, I want to say a big thank you to BetterHelp, the world's largest therapy service, for sponsoring this video. With BetterHelp, you can find the therapist that is best for you from their network of 30,000 licensed and experienced professional therapists. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when you'd like. It's flexible, it's affordable, and it's easy to use. Here's how it works. Click our link in the description and answer a few questions about your therapy needs. Then BetterHelp matches you with a therapist. After meeting your therapist, you may want to speak to someone new, so you can switch to a different professional at no additional charge. Your sessions are on your time via text, chat, phone, or video call. They make it really easy to work for you and your schedule. As you know, we take mental health seriously, so we encourage you to take the time to talk to someone today. You can get 10% off your first month using our link, betterhelp.com slash cinemasins, and try BetterHelp today. That's betterhelp.com slash cinemasins. Comcast. Also, the movie starts with Jefferson Starship's Jane, which is played at the beginning of Wet Hot American Summer, which Elizabeth Banks was in. And and this seems like one of those references that ask you to know stuff and things, and I'm tired of being reminded that I know these stuff and that things. I don't pretend to know what a person on drugs is thinking, but before he even plunges to his death, this seems like a terrible idea. You're gonna have to parachute down into the woods and find all these bags under the influence for miles. And I can't imagine a worse buzzkill. Big congratulations to whoever half-assed the packaging on the cocaine so that some of the cocaine would spill in this bag of cocaine so that we'd know we're dealing with cocaine in a movie called Cocaine Bear. Reading. Also, this information tells us how black bears usually behave in the wild as if it's trying to preemptively short-circuit any sins I'll make about how the bear should behave. I applaud the effort, but I'm sinning the futility. <laughs> Movie makes a little joke about the source of this info coming from Wikipedia, but their info comes from Stephen Herrero, who wrote a book called Bear Attacks, Their Causes and Avoidance, and not from some 420 enthusiast from Maine who can edit Wikipedia pages. You know the first thing I thought when I saw you? I want to make a child with that person. Kids. It's about the band. That is the one thing you said I could handle myself, and I've already made my decision, Elsa. Movie has time for this, and we'll continue to have time for several even more pointless conversations. The British. Olaf. Movie gets character name inspiration from Frozen and imagines a world where Olaf and Elsa are getting married. And I don't want to live in a world where Elsa has to attach a cucumber to Olaf's nether regions, making that Do You Wanna Build a Snowman song entirely inappropriate for youngsters or me. First humpbacks in Iceland. And now this. I'm not currently watching Cocaine Humpback Whale. Jesus, that sure would have changed the tone of Star Trek 4, wouldn't it have? Give me that movie. We have such good luck in nature. Premature celebration. It's demented or something. What? Look, we usually take movies to task for characters seeing things in great detail as if they have zooming technology in their eyes. But I can't believe Elsa can't see this bear clearly banging his head against the tree from here. I don't expect my CGI cocaine bears to be super realistic, but come on! You could have put Ken Marino in a bear suit and it would have been better than this. <laughs> Wasting food. This is your brain on drugs. Sorry, movie, but those ads didn't start until 1987, and you clearly showed me it was 1985 during Olaf and Elsa's romantic hike in the woods. So you can see the bind I'm in. What? You just want me to let it go? Millions of dollars worth of cocaine dropped from the sky early today onto a driveway in Knoxville, Tennessee. This explains so much! In case you confused it with Knoxville Johnny. Full name, Andrew C. Thornton II. You said full name, but you didn't say his full name. Reba Mitchell would be amazing at Cinecoke Sins. In case you confused it with St. Louis Wales. And he's in mourning. Joni just died. And he quit. Joni's the reason why he quit. And so begins the first of several dozen subplots in this movie that are poorly fleshed out and feel totally unnecessary. I never thought my main complaint about a movie called Cocaine Beer would be that it had too much story. In case you confused it with Chatta- Seriously, how many Chattahoochees could there possibly be in the US? This room is an orgy of evidence that we're in a kid's room from 1985. Kid that just happens to like every 80s thing ever. And holy sh is that a Jason Bateman poster from his Silver Spoons days? Thought you were off tonight. We talked about this, remember? Sari, how can you possibly expect her to remember that when it happened off screen? Descriptors that fail to narrow down the thing you're describing. They spelled her name wrong, David. Oh, that's sad. I guess this guy's wife died and now he's gone solo. The shooter has been identified as Andrew Thornton of Paris, Kentucky. Yet another bar where the news of the movie's main story just happens to be playing loudly enough for all those thirsty bar patrons who are avid consumers of news. Wait, is that us? Hey. This is the most observant drunk trucker west of the Mississippi, because he hears this, knows exactly what Eddie is referring to, and reports it so a big part of the plot can happen. Now, adoption people, I'm not sure who I talked to over there, 
told me I was supposed to be getting me a lab. This conversation won't pay off in the way you think it might, but it will waste all the time you hoped it wouldn't. Hey, look, I'm gonna have to call you back. But don't worry, this phone call was purely for exposition, so it pretty much did what I needed it to do. You got plans for tonight? Uh, Bob, you are a nice guy. I just don't Mind looking after Rosette? Oh, f you, movie. This is not how anyone asks a colleague to look after their pet, and you just wanted this workplace harassment fake out. A trucker overheard a couple of guys talking at a bar last night. I guess there were more detailed plans between Eddie and David we didn't hear, but I find it hard to believe that after Eddie started talking about his f***ed up tattoo and his sadness that the trucker took that much interest in their conversation. I only had her for a day. Then why do you have a f***ing dog at all if you're struggling to look after it on day one? Whatever this dog ends up being to this story isn't worth the time spent to set it up. I guarantee it. I can't believe I left the backpack. I can. Yeah, but only because you've seen this movie already and know it'll be found later by your mom. Is Dee Dee here just to point out block conveniences? Because that's my job. <laughs> Being this startled when a phone rings. Every time I call, he's in the bathroom. What the hell is wrong with him? The one setup we don't circle back to, and it's the only one I'm personally invested in. Of course, the kid's backpack is within f***ing view of the window. Jesus Christ. Sari opens this bag, and it's like someone's distant memory of the 80s exploded all over the counter. Who carries this many baseball card checklists in their bag, but no real baseball cards? It looks like the deer on the sign are doing it. Allow me to introduce you to one of the more refined gags in the movie. Flyer inspires House of Pain's jump around. This scene requires two kids to eat chips throughout the scene, which we all know is a pleasant, not irritating sound whatsoever. Hey, Henry! Oh, f off with this bear sh There's no way she spotted a brown package behind this f***ing leaf from all the way over here. When have you seen cocaine on the streets? Wanna do it? This scene will have two kids pretending to do drugs and adorably f*** it up for the actually not very adorable and actually quite irritating amount of the where's my f***ing coked up bear sometime. Could you imagine that? Deer on cocaine? Do you think my dad has ever done cocaine? Your dad has definitely done cocaine. I'm getting the sense that about 95% of this movie's screenplay will be discussion and sight gags about the bear on cocaine, or others talking about the bear and other living things on cocaine, and merely mentioning cocaine. Cocaine. Cocaine bear resorts to horror movie villain cliches by running in the background or foreground like a dick. <laughs> Movies cut to another scene saves these kids from a bear attack. John loved this song. Skip! I think he's happy she's dead. Holy f I think the skip button got broken because it skipped right to something else that needed to be skipped. As if realizing its bare-boned premise wasn't going to last long enough for a feature-length movie, Cocaine Bear resorts to a piss-poor homage to the bathroom fight in Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what happened. A skateboard hit you. Filmmaker somehow thinks this suddenly turns into hilarity when someone yells out what just happened. We all remember the store fight in Clerks when Randall hit Dante with the baguette and Dante was like, Randall, you just hit me with the baguette. What the f***? And we laughed so hard. <laughs> baguette. David looks surprised to find a knife in his shoulder, and he should be, considering it apparated out of f***ing nowhere after he's already dispatched the generic 80s teens. Please tell me you found them like this. Why would David go to the effort of piling up the bodies like this, especially with a busted shoulder? This isn't going to look any less suspicious than if he left them on the floor. Eddie finds drugs on the Duchamp gang, but why didn't David find this obvious package? He's the one who bothered to stack two other people in this bathroom stall. You'd think a big pouch of cocaine would be easily noticed. Also, maybe David didn't notice the drugs because after he knocked everyone out, this guy didn't have any obvious package on him. So where the hell did it come from? Also, also, of course the guys who randomly jumped David also have found the cocaine that David and Eddie are looking for. Sometimes the script, I mean God, just drops stuff into your lap like that. <laughs> I was hoping the revelation that these guys had drugs on them would get us out of the bathroom. But much like devouring the shut the cluck up at Hattie B's, this development has only extended our time here. We stashed it under a gazebo. Come back for it later tonight. Why the f did the Duchamps bother trying to mug David in the bathroom when they're sitting on a load of cocaine? Well, I'd expect them to be smart, of course, but it seems like if you just scored a fortune worth a blow, you wouldn't bother with petty bathroom crime. How the f did Bob end up at the same phone booth that David was using earlier? Is the glory hole on the billboard that clearly refers to mining and nothing else so funny they had to show it again? Realize I hadn't said a proper goodbye. <laughs> I don't know if dogs think about that sort of thing. They might, but I think this dog in particular is probably thinking, when the f*** are we getting back to the cocaine bear part of the movie called Cocaine Bear? But it's possible I'm projecting. <laughs> bear on cocaine is somehow subtle enough to do a sneak attack on Peter and Ranger Liz. Of course, we know why there's no bear here. It's because the budget probably wouldn't allow for it. But again, this is where I make that call to Ken Marino and put him in a bear suit already. Bears can't climb trees. Of course they can!
Then why are you up here? Normally, this would be a good time to send the fact that this kid would be good at cinema sins. But that said, this has to be better than being down on the ground. Furthermore, it seems like the only reason they have this exchange is so that the movie can now have a bear climb a tree. As if it was verboten until these words escape their mouths. If this asshole is so hungry, then why did he let Peter go a minute ago? Yes, I expect logic from my bears that are on drugs. You can't coddle them. <laughs> If the bear is attracted to the smell of cocaine, then why isn't she absolutely raiding this giant stash in the middle of the bushes nearby? And again, why didn't she kill Peter earlier when he suddenly found himself completely covered in the stuff? The little man was an expert on bears, but didn't know the bear was the cocaine bear. Roll coke, it's... You taste her that way. And what? Couldn't catch up to her? Wait, you're gonna shoot him? I hell yes, I'm gonna shoot him! He took him out of my ass! What the f***? Is wrong with this, guy. this Duchamp brother thinks she's referring to David, but she's referring to the bear. Classic hilarious mix-up, but why did the bear even come here of all places? Probably just for this one joke. I had to raise the kill count. That's a f***ing bear. Ranger Liz misses the bear, shoots the kid in the head, and reconciles the murder like she accidentally stepped on a bug. I was expecting the film to be ridiculous, but I was also expecting it to contain some believable humans as well. Did the bear have a plan here? Because it sure f***ing looks that way. Did it deliberately sneak around the roof and silently jump back down to the front door because it knew that's where bear fodder number four was standing? Did the cocaine give it f***ing super intelligence and x-ray vision too? Also, I'm really beginning to wonder what motivates this bear. Like, at some points you think she just wants coke, and others you think the bear is just hungry. Then, sometimes in scenes like this, the bear is just a homicidal maniac like Jason Bear he's in the classic movie Freddy vs. Jason. I'm done playing this game. What game? 20 questions. No, sir, you will not be done until you have filled the scenes between what we actually came here to see and certainly not before this is used as some bullshit emotional payoff when we think you're going to die. Is it bigger than a bread box? Yes. Woo! Why is he wooing? Whether Eddie says yes or no, there's still a trillion things both bigger and smaller than a bread box. This just rules out half of those trillion things, which would be the case whichever way Eddie answered. And no, I did not think I would be explaining the fundamentals of 20 questions during this cocaine bear feature. Whoever's doing this isn't screaming somehow. Can you just push harder? Did the bear prop him up against the door? Because last we saw, bear fodder number four had made sure that bear fodder number three was moved out of the way. See anything? Holy shit, I think I know who this is. This fucker was very rude to me at an Ikea once. All I did was ask him if the item I was looking for was in the back and he fucking killed me for it. Did you shoot that guy? As a paramedic, how is this your first question? Yes, she's conscious and breathing, but do you want to maybe keep her that way by doing some first aid shit? So the bear is sitting in here chilling and obviously just had a feast, but there are so many things wrong with this. First off, if you remember, the bear smashed this tiny window at the front entrance and grabbed this dude by the face. We now have to believe that after the bear did this, she entered the park ranger's office and closed the door behind her because there are no other entrances or smashed windows she could have taken. The bear then proceeded to drag this guy into another room, again, opening the door and closing the door behind her like a polite cocaine bear. I don't know why the bear is tearing the door down when she clearly knows how to use a doorknob, a dick. What the f*** is wrong with that bear? Why is bear fodder number six asking this? So far she's just seen a bear in a cupboard acting pretty much how a terrifying bear would act. Unless she thinks the bear shot the guy blocking the door, this should just seem like a regular animal attack. This bear catching up to a speeding ambulance couldn't track down a 13-year-old girl earlier in the movie. Ah! I can't believe it took three near-death experiences before one finally stuck the landing. I'm a terrible person. I guess I don't expect people to act rationally in this situation, but I don't know why Beth decides to put her foot on the gas instead of simply leaving the ambulance and running for dear life. My mom is the reason I'm the man I am today. Movie tries to make me care about any of these characters during this entirely too long walk to the gazebo full of cocaine. Lizards are good listeners, bud. But people, people are good at hearing. And don't forget the scripts are like a bunch of cliches. You never know which one you're gonna get. It's the sweetest thing I ever heard. Thank you. These actors are doing their very best, but I am not sure I've seen so many skippable moments in a movie before. The last time we saw Bob, he drove to the park ranger station and saw a truck with a Missouri plate, which is exactly what he needed to find. He got finished with the big gulp, and then he just decided to take a walk in the park and find the gazebo where the drugs are hidden? Why didn't he go into the ranger station? Sure, he would have stumbled on dead bodies and an angry bear and probably would be dead now, but it's not like he knew that. I thought at the very least he'd want to check in with the park ranger and ask some questions first, but he just accidentally himself into the exact place he needs to be. Also, he somehow gets here well before David, Eddie, and the Duchamp guy get here, and they had a huge head start. No doubt there are different ways to get to this place from the ranger station, but how the f*** did they pick a route that ended up getting beat by the cop? Bob has no idea how he's going to get to the roof of this gazebo, but the movie editing will figure it out, much like it did when it saved Dee Dee from the vicious coked-up bear earlier. How did you get up there? 
Well, I jumped from that tree over there. You did not. The only tree you could be talking about is this one. And that requires me to believe you climbed that tree in the first place and had the ability to jump that distance. As Clay Davis said many times, she. How do you take those two fingers off? They're not even next to each other. Bear Fodder number six is trying to be excellent at cinema sins, but gets disqualified for being written by the same person who wrote the thing that he's sinning. That's Dee Dee's sweater. God damn, how far did this girl go? I get running away from the bear, but that bear eventually gave up and ran the other way. The bear probably stopped chasing her well before the place where Dee Dee colored the rock with paint. And there was a little shelter she could have used instead of going even deeper into the woods. It's a bear. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I'm not falling for none of you. Yeah, it seems pretty unlikely, but the bear really is just stumbling from one set of characters to the next as the story needs her to. Help me. Please. Olaf inexplicably pulls his shit together and agrees to take them back to the bear's lair. I have no explanation for this, other than perhaps acting works like homeopathy claims to work and this character is remembering its previous life as Tormund Giant's pain. <sighs> Movie suggests that the bear can only now smell the cocaine brick that fell out of David's pants. The bear is a girl. Oh, yeah. how do you know that? Because its vagina is on my ear. Knowing what a bear vagina feels like. Also, unless bear vaginas are located on their necks, it would be pretty difficult for one to be rubbing against Eddie's ear right now. She fell on him facing the same way he was facing. This would only be possible if she fell on him the opposite way. It's like cocaine Christmas. Movie comes up with sequel titles, and I'm not even finished getting mad at this one yet. Go! He's letting them go? Just because they bonded over a bear attack? He's been chasing this gang for years, and he's just letting them go? You know, now that Bob's gonna die, I'm kind of glad the movie didn't make Isaiah Whitlock Jr. do his trademark shit catchphrase. That said, movie doesn't make Isaiah Whitlock Jr. do his trademark shit catchphrase. They're gonna come after me, my family, if I don't get them every penny's worth. It sounds like you're already f***ed and there's absolutely no reason to go any further. Does the drug cartel that wants every penny's worth decide not to kill you because you tried hard? You need to forget this because, as Worm once said, No fooling around, it's highway time. Reba approaches with her gun drawn on the villains for no reason other than to dramatically put her gun away so that we're shocked at her betrayal. I told you not to hurt him. I don't work for you. I don't understand any of this. Reba's a surprise antagonist, and good for her. But this doesn't impact the movie in any meaningful way. She even quits in seven minutes. I don't understand why Reba needs to be here, or why Sid needed her to tag along, or why she needed to make a surprise reveal. If she's helping Sid and doesn't care the secrets out, why wasn't she already here with him? What kind of organization is he running, where a valuable asset inside a police force that blows her cover is better than any number of the henchmen he could have brought out here? This cut to Bob and his dog just waste valuable cocaine bear time. I appreciate the movie's attempts, on occasion, to make jokes not related to the cooked up bear, but they seem to function mostly as filler. She's not. I mean, there's no way. Holy sh she actually is taking the fucking kid in there with her. Okay, this scene where they walk past a bag that they don't have to kill a bear for is worth a sit-off. Don't move. Oh, well, there's your predictable sequel bait, I guess. I look forward to the inevitable cocaine cubs and its spin-offs, opium utter, heroin hedgehog, and meth marmot. You're smart girl, you left us clues. But not nearly smart enough to not skip school, not do some blow, and not get lost in a cave. Cocaine bear's back. This feels like a line that might have been funny if there hadn't already been a number of remarks about the bear that's on cocaine. Or if the joke wasn't already told by the title itself. And while we're at it, roll the sequel's credits. Look, it's dark as fuck and appears to have been for quite some time. So why is Sid only now removing his period appropriate shades? This is it. This is what? How did you even know to walk here? Bob told you the bear went north, but that didn't tell you anything specific about where the bear could have gone after that. Did you know what Dee Dee's paint markings meant? Did she leave some other article of clothing across the river for you to find? You saw what that bear did to that hiker? And we're being shown this as a flashback instead of just seeing it when it happened because... Last ditch attempt at being creative? Eddie, put the rest in the bag. I still don't know how finding this incomplete bag of cocaine is supposed to save Sid's ass whatsoever. I'd have been in Canada already. Although, I guess now I remember Henry Hill saying, I don't want to go any place it's cold. There's a lot more out there. We're not whole yet. The movie tries to justify this nonsense ending by making Sid incapable of seeing how f***ed he is no matter how much cocaine he finds. I'm leaving, Sid. Go. Reba believes this is something you can say to a drug dealer, believes he'll be cool with it, and turns her back on him. I have no f***ing clue what this moment is about. I don't know why David suddenly gives a sh** about a dirty cop. I don't know why Sid gives a sh** about David and doesn't shoot them both. I don't even understand why Reba is crooked in the first place. And most of all, I have no idea why we have 17 B-plots with less meat on the bone than Ranger Liz's face. Somebody better bring it down or somebody else is gonna die. But first, can somebody tell me how it got up there? The only thing less believable than the bear storing it up there is that it fell out of the plane and almost literally into the bear's and the finale's lap. Shoot the f***! 
fucking bears! Says the man holding a rifle who isn't shooting the fucking bears. I'm Henry, and I am so fucking tired! Child swears for a cheap laugh cliche. She's protecting the cubs! We need to jump! The fuck you do, lady. Now that you know where the bear is and what it's after, nothing is stopping you from going back the way you came instead of jumping to what should be the death of you and the two preteens currently in your care. And if she's worried that's where the bear is heading, I'll take my chances with my rifle and a dash to the cave over a blind jump off a cliff every day. Cocaine bear survives this. And this. By snorting more cocaine. Oh, and she also survives all the cocaine. Also, this scene does not include the Popeye theme song or an animated tank on the bear's biceps after doing this cocaine. Are we saying that she caught the bullet with her teeth or regurgitated the one from her stomach? Six more days to John. Six more days. These are some of the dumbest dying words I have ever heard. The f does he care about Eddie's tattoo in his dying moments? I got my last question. What? There's too many questions. There's too many, right? Yeah. No, it wasn't. F you. Thanks for the reminder, but it's been foreshadowed so much my brain is dribbling out my ears. I find this extremely hard to believe. I mean, yes, in real life, the packages were all ripped open and the cocaine was scattered all over the place. But in this movie, finding some of the bags and loose bricks of cocaine should not have been all that hard. Especially since one of them was just hanging on a tree branch. Pablo Escobar doesn't get taxidermied and allegedly displayed in a Kentucky mole by the end of this movie. That's right, Kentucky. I said allegedly. Bite me. Again, I don't expect this guy to be smart, but if you're hitchhiking and you have a sign that says New York City and you get picked up by a person with a herd of sheep in the back of their truck, that person isn't your friend. What's it eating? The answer is David's fingers, which makes me wonder why they didn't go to a hospital before going all the way to St. Goddamn Lewis. Quit eating all the mm. goddamn cocaine! How'd you get your balls from freezing off? You got to keep moving, that's the secret. Walking's good, fighting's better. Best. Did he play fetch? Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. God bless you! People hear about what you're doing in their life. Hurts me to tell you about they, they life that you. Yes! Oh no, he died! Have you ever done cocaine? You know what I used to eat for breakfast? Cocaine. You know what I used to eat for lunch? Cocaine. Don't you know anything about Fantasia? It's the world of human fantasy. So I should get Gabe a lizard? I read somewhere that their periods attract bears. The bears can smell the menstruation. All right, listen, just calm down, all right? It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. Are, are, you, are you hurt? Were you attacked? Hi, everyone. I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs. Take care of yourself. I guess it's what you're best at, isn't it? 